Okay. Um, I believe this is the live session already. And this is not overview. This is a uh, slides now. Uh, before I move on, I like to give a disclaimer as I gave, like time to time I use examples to relate networking concept with daily life. My analogies are only to provide learners a memorable and interesting learning experience with some fun on Cisco Network Academy concepts and not to be treated as quite accurate in some instances. So you can use it. And this video series or these videos are not to um, suffix any um, Cisco Network Academy or online class or so on. It's just to assist the learning journey. People must online enroll to formal Network Academy to qualify as a Cisco uh, Academy student or instructor. This is the proper slides of, given by Cisco. These are some objectives. So IP4 V4 network addresses. Uh, IPv6 network addresses, and in here, network portion, host portion, subnet mask, we covered that. Unicast, broadcast, multicast, IPv4 address, we covered. Public, private, visa. Um, conversion between binary and decimal, we haven't, but if you have a question, I'll, I'll speak now about that. And IPv6, configure IPv6 addresses to provide connectivity, explain the need of IPv6 addre addressing, like what are the motivations, depletion of IPv4, that's a big motivation. Representation of IPv6 address, common types of network addresses, unicast, anycast, multicast, different global unicast address, how to configure, describe multicast address, and can confirm the verification things. ICP trace route and so on. So IPv4 addresses are 32 bits. So like this in binary combination, we can't remember that. So what we do, we make them dotted decimal in English. So as we mentioned earlier, so it looks the binary combination of IPv4 32 bit address looks like that. And um, the, there is a topic a video demonstration in this subtopic. If you do the ending with given address with a separate mask, you'll pull out your network address, host address and so on. So as you see now, I'm just moving and flying with the slides because it's just a checklist to show that we covered or not. So this is the binary and decimal conversion. So are you, are you confident with the binary and decimal conversion? You will not be given access with anything in your vendor exam. You cannot take calculators, unfortunately. So if you rely on calculators to do the job for you, you are not allowed. If you are in a vendor exam, uh, which is Cisco, which is a virtual university enterprise testing center, there are so many testing centers in Melbourne CVDs, um, over $400 um, for an exam. You can do two ways. One is CCNA 1 and 2. You can sit for CCENT exam, Cisco Certified Entry Level Network Technician. That the syllabus is only Cisco's CCNA 1 and 2. And you finish CCNT, you passed it. And then CCNA 3 and 4 will be the another half of that. And if you do both CCNTs, one, two, and three, four, you are also equivalent to the composite CCNA. These are two models. One is CCNT1 and CCNT2. The fees would be the half of half of the full 400 version. So money-wise is same, but content and the load-wise, stress-wise is half. You can choose to do CCNA1, 2, 3, 4 in one composite vendor exam, or you can do one and two, one, and three and four, another one. That's what I'm coming for. So you're not allowed in any of these Cisco's exam, any calculators, even your glass will be checked. Is it a Google glass, your glass? You are not allowed to have your own pen, marker, nothing, not even water bottle. If you need to drink order, you raise your hand, cameras will detect that or someone raised hand, and proctor will come and she or he will give you the order or anything else you need. So even your class will be checked, is it a Google class? And these days, it can be Google class, and then you have so many things can be. So <laughs> and it, like notes. they make notes. You cannot, you, you, they'll be given you A3 laminated page, laminated page, so you can rub off, you can wipe off, and you can do the calculation subreading on top, but you cannot take a blank page. You cannot have anything except you, yourself and your knowledge and your skills. So, if you rely or banking on a calculator, which will, a scientific calculator or smartphone calculator, which will do the job for binary and decimal, you're not. So 
Are you confident with uh, binary decimal conversion? If not, I can give you five minutes for that. You, you want to? Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. That's fine. So in that case, this thing, in that case, I go big here again. So what happens? One, two, three. Which number system? I. One, two, three. Is it binary or decimal or hexa? Decimal. Decimal. How do we know? Because in binary, there is only zero and one. So there is no question. It can be optical. It can be optical. It can be decimal. Yes. If he, if I write here ten, no confusion. It's decimal. So we can have a lower subscript notation to designify that this is binary or so this is a decimal or octal or hexa. Now what happens in this one two three case? The way we said one hundred twenty three is actually like that. We have three times ten to the power zero, two times ten to the power one or ten raised to power one and one times ten raised to two. So these are the positional notation, positional increment zero one two. It's going three four five, and that's how we make the hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, and so on. We know that, right? Same rule applies. So if you see that 10 raised to 0, anything constant, because constant value here in decimal is 10, because it's a 0 to 9 number system, 0 to 9 total of 10. So that's why 10, any constant value to 0 equals to always 1. In binary number system, the base will be 2, because it's only 0 and 1. So 2 to the power 0 equal to 1. In this case, 10 to the power 0 equal to 1. So if we make it 3 times 1, and 10 times 1, 10 to the power 1 is 10, times 2 is 20, and 10 squared is 100, times 1. So that is 123. That's how it's made up, right? Same rule applies for binary. So if we have binary number like 1001, I said binary, not decimal, because I put the notation underneath. In here, it will be 1, but now not 10 to the power 0, but 2 to the power 0, because it's two number system. 2 to the power 0, 0 times 1, 0 times 2, 1 times 3, and so on. 0, 1, 2, 3, keeps going on, right? So, 2 to the power 0 equal to 1, 1 times 1 equal to 1, 0 times anything will be 0, 0 times anything will be 0, and 2 to the 3 equals to 8. So that will give you 9 in decimal. But that is theory, right? That's complicated. We can't do this, and we can't do this. We have no time to make this calculation, writing, and blah, blah, like that. But what I have demonstrated here, how the numbers are made of digits or bits in binary. So what I would now give you a tip to make your life simpler and easier, I would ask you to memorize an order of positional notational values. It is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And it's no brainer because what I did, I just double up. One times two, two, two times two, four, four times two, eight, eight times two, it's doubling up every time. Okay. And why I stopped there? Because, because two to the power zero, two to the power one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Zero to seven, total of eight bits. 32 bits, each octet eight bits. See, all things are related. We are constraint of 8 bits because of 8 bit makes one octet of 32 bits. So 0 to 7, 8 bits. So if we remember this series of numbers, 1 to 8, 4, our mic is loud. And you don't remember, as I said, it's doubling every time. Now, if you have a binary number, 99, in your example, in your lab you are doing in the morning, 99, what I did with Rob when I was sitting with him, 
I just straight away I told him 64 plus 32 plus 3 plus 1. So why I use it? I actually use these values. Any number, say 29, 123, 72, any random number within the range of 0 to 255, you like to use these numbers only. That's the idea. You give me any number in between 0 to 25, and we have to use only this, this, this. So if it is 29, say 29 can be made of 16 plus 4 plus 8 plus 1, 16 plus 4, 20, 8, 28 plus 1, 29. So I would use 1, 8, 4, 1, and rest all will be zeros. That's my binary of 29. Did you get the logic? No? So that's how to convert from binary to decimal, right? But now decimal to binary, how we make it? Say for 192 or 170. 170 is most common one since it's back sounds. And this is the most funniest one because the 170 in decimal in binary is 10101010. Who cannot remember this? Let me do it. 101010, that's equals to 170. Now, if it is 172, I'll just make some adjustment here. Then, if it is, say, 192 decimal given, and I have to find out why I have to find out. The question could be which situation I have to find out the binary. Remember the network bits as is, host bits. If you have seven bits and one bit host, you have to take the binary and leave the network bits as is and the host to change. In that case, you have to convert decimal to binary. I repeat, in my explanation in the morning, I mentioned that network address leave as is the network portion and host bits all to zero and broadcast all to ones and so on. If you have some combinations, slash 23, 17, and it's a what number? Eight bits and eight bits and one bit here host network and rest seven bits are host. And it was 23. So what I'll do, if it is 23 here, 16 plus seven. So 16 plus seven means 16 plus four plus two plus one. So 128, 64, I'm using the same thing. 128, 64, I'm making zeros. I said 16 and uh, eight, four, two, one, that's 23. I said only one piece to be network, I'll not change it. Rest all will be zeros, right? So in that sort of situation, I have to know how to convert decimal to binary. So this is how you do in short, but I'm not going to take a longer actually time in this short of forum, how to do the convert binary and decimal, but this is just an overview. And um, please follow my videos and follow any other YouTube videos or any other resources to come back with this short of exam. And I can see it. I will put up the PowerPoint now. So in that way, we'll, we'll do that. Now, this is the positional, um, Notation how you do that. The same thing I mentioned here, it's written as well. Radix is actually the constant, you know, the power 10 or, yeah. So it says number base or radix. Decimal is 10 and two will be for binary. So it is also mentioned, so I'm skipping these slides now. Binary to decimal, decimal to binary conversion. Now network and host portion. All devices on the same network must have the identical network portion. If you are not in the same network, that means you cannot talk to each other. If if actually George is outside this room, how I can say, George, where are you? But he would not listen. I broadcast, but no one would respond because he's not inside. Default gateway is something we need to understand. If you are not going beyond your LAN, if you're within the same LAN, you'd never need a default gateway. I repeat. If I have to talk to Rakesh now, which is in our comfort zone, which is in our reach, he is inside the room, then I don't need to go to the door. But if I need to talk to the manager of Rob in his school, who he or she is not here, I have to ask what's his or her name, I have to go to the door, contact my reception, and then, then I need the default gateway. Default gateway because if you have a situation where you have multiple doors to go out, which one of the multiple will be a default to go out and come in? That's why the word default gateway comes in. And I'll explain more in due time. So separate mask helps devices identify the network portion host portion. In short, that's the idea. You understand network and host portion. Device doesn't understand. Router doesn't understand. So separate mask 
in the mask in this guys help us to do that so default gateway is the same network see in here all of them the first three octets are same 192.168.10 and the subnet mask as I said, all little bits are all ones, 255, 255, and this is a class C address. So why I brought up this IP addressing class at the very first lecture of Cisco's journey without giving you why you need network and capsule and everything, because we have to move on to the labs more, not talking more here. But if we don't understand default gateway, we'll be typing, but what for we're typing what? We have been forgotten or lost. That's what I brought up, this approach, that IP addressing should be first. So, as I mentioned, the IP address given, they take the binary. Subnet must given, they take the binary. And then they will do end operation. End means multiplication. One to one is one, one to zero is zero, and so on. And then they will get the network address, which is very complicated. That's in theory, but we have already shown you how to find the network address. Leave as is network portion, host bits all zeros. Leave as is network portion, host bits all ones gives you the broadcast. And one plus network, host address first, one minus broadcast, last host address. So that's the end operation. So it's all there. I'm skipping it because uh, this one is interesting because that was the question in one of your uh, exercises in the morning that slash 27 or 25 in a class B network, right? What happens? The prefix length is the number of bits in the subnet mask set to one. That means all the network bits, consecutively, if they're all ones, they are the num network bits, right? So if I have, I'll not use the word subnetting a lot because that's chapter eight, but just to give some, some feed to the thirsty mind. If this is 172, 1 1.2.3, nothing written, the prefix length by default would be slash 16, because 16 bits per network portion. If it is 10, 1, 2, 3, slash 8. If 192, slash 24. Correct, right? And we usually don't write it, because it's the default thing, and it's class 4. But if we change this, 17, 9, 25, anything higher than the default value of that class, higher than the default value of that class, 16 is the default value, 8 is the default value, 24 is the default value, higher than that number, we call that network is subnetted. Subnetting has happened. Now, the big block is not divided into two halves, and, or multiple, and so on and so on. That's the subnetting. But we'll discuss in chapter 8 time more in detail. But the same rule applies. If it is the prefix length 17, 18, 19, that means number of network bits is 17. That means 8 bits, no change, 8 bits, no change here. What about the value? Change the binary. Just only one bits for network, rest all goes, change to zeros. And post all to zero as well. So rule, as I mentioned, even in the morning time, I mentioned that the same rule applies regardless is classful or classless. As soon as it is subnetted, you no longer belong to class B. If it is higher than the default number of prefix length, this address is no longer a classful address, it's classless. And there is another name called classless inter-domain routing, C-I-D-R. We'll discuss that in, um, separate them anyway. So the same rule, so it's no fancy, it's nothing new actually, it's just the following the same formula, leave the network bits as is, post bits all zeros and so on, regardless is higher or smaller. So as I mentioned is higher, you might have, I had, I have all the stupid questions to me all the time. I had a question to me, what happens if it is smaller? Default value is 16, higher is subnetted, if it is smaller, like if it is 15, less than 16, if it is 7, less than 8, if it is 23, less than 24, then it's called supernet. Supernet is another or uh, summarization. Okay, we'll discuss in season two, but I just let you know, because why don't we just touch a little bit 
and you can keep moving on and so on. So that's that's the idea of um, that. Now, moving back to these types of network addresses, post network address, fast source address, last source address, broadcast address, we covered already. And end operation we did. This is the lab using the Windows calculator with network addresses. As I mentioned, Cisco has 40 plus labs, but because of time, uh, we can't do all the labs. But they mentioned which labs you should do more significance than or more importance than others. So <clears throat> this is just a lab number. You have access all the labs in your labs folder on your files segment. Labs folder on files on your left hand side. You can use packet tracer at home in here real device because we've got millions of dollars invested so i would encourage to use the real hardware because if you don't use the real hardware and please encourage your learners as well <coughs> the network layer issues are always in physical layer. <coughs> and i share with you it's not a mystery with respect to murad and everyone different environment different topology different way of connecting the patch cables and so on it's your knowledge is perfect. Murat has got an issue just a few seconds back. He configured everything spot on, 100% correct. But his adapters, the network interface card, the physical device was not picking up. So usually, as you may have heard, Windows 7, Windows 9, or sorry, Windows 7, Windows 10, they usually, if you do disable enable, it gets the IP address and takes the new impact. This machine sometimes doesn't. But he was ready, he was done. His labs was finished or IPv4 side. Once it's restarted, it's coming up, right? Physical layer. So if you use a packet tracer, how do you get this experience? Physical layer is always the case, 99.99% time in real life as well. So I encourage you to please use the real hardware. It takes time, but it is worthy. Now, this is the how you allocate the IP address statically. This is dynamic address thing we mentioned earlier. So you can see that what I did, I started with different classification IP address, version four, version six allocation. So it's coming, but in a different format, right? So all of these are here. This is the transmission uh, of packets, unicast, broadcast, multicast. So and explains what it is, broadcast what they are. And this is the range. I said class D, see the range, and it says routing protocols use multicast transmission as I mentioned earlier. And this is the blocks of addresses for private. And this is the special use. I haven't covered this. I haven't discussed a lot about this. So we discussed the link local IPv6. This is the link local IPv4, 169. In the past, it used to be called automatic IP configuration, APIP. APIPA. It's actually Microsoft term. Microsoft used to say APIPA, but Cisco is now following more like the IPv6 conventional terminologies. So link local is the address. If your DCB server or your router at home, what happens? Your router is the server. DCB IP address gives, right? If your router cannot give the IP addresses because it's hot, warm, it's used, it's a $200 router, not $4,000 router. So after a while, it gets warm and hot. It stops working and it cannot release the IP address and you get still on your machine something 169 and you know if you have all the machines in the same link because your router has got four port switch so all four machines your PC or if it's wireless your your wireless uh, phone or NAS network data storage your video devices they can talk but you cannot just go internet because the IP address is not through the DSCB it's just link local 169 thing. So the level zero thing is what IP address, IP config slash all, or if it is consistent, the first thing the level one people ask us, can you reset the router, can you turn on and off? 90 second rule, 30, 30, 30, comes later. But if the restarts and DCP address is being released, you're good, go to the internet again. Another common address is the testnet address, which is used for teaching. Like if you have a, at my home, I have a USB device, which is connected to my router, which is my web server. I don't pay GoDaddy or anyone. It's my web server for my free with stuffs. So whatever movies or lectures like these or even PowerPoints I share with someone, that's from there, free of course. And that's using that testnet address. 
a not a 192.168 but 192.0.20 sort of address. I discussed the loopback address and its intention. So it's to test to IP TCP IP configuration is operational before it gets to the communicating parties. It checks is it okay? Is it crazy or not? The device himself. The loopback is asking, am I right or not? <coughs> it's a local address, but it's because it's part of the 192 block anyway. Yeah. So these are the different classes. They haven't explained here how this range comes, but we explain in the morning. And this is something to remember. So class pool addresses. Um, classless addressing introduced. So class pool addressing was since 1980s. Because of the running short of IP addresses, in 1990s, they start doing this subnetting thing, like they divide the network. If you have a business, say for example, I have an ice cream parlor okay, in Geelong, and I have only say four or five devices, then why would I need some 254 block of full class C? It's a vast of addresses. So what then I can use my ISP, my service provider will give me just what, how many I need. It's not exactly, if I need five addresses, they can't just give me five. Maybe they'll give me 16 or, you know, close to that number. But at least it reduces the worst of IP addresses. And that is called classless interdomain routing and subnetting. We'll discuss in chapter eight more in detail. This is the assignment. So network information center for different regions, America, um, Europe and such, who assigns the IP addresses. And now this is the IPv6 concept. So IPv6 340 on Motivation is rapidly increasing internet population. Everything is on internet. Depletion of IPv4. Issues with network address translation. Okay, bear in mind, this net is not something we discussed net 64. This net here, network address translation is to translate between private and public address. We'll discuss net if you are ever in my class in CCNA2. So that's a little bit of promo, right? <laughs> so I encourage you to come back to RMIT for NAT session in CCNA2. So as NAT has got issues, IPv6 is more well accepted way to do it. So moving on. So these are the techniques I mentioned, dual stacks. Devices run both for IPv4, IPv6 protocol stacks simultaneously. So device has two protocol stacks in one card. Tunneling is packet is encapsulated inside the packet. So inside this IPv4, you have IPv6 and vice versa. Translation is conversion in between six and four. Uh, you, when you configure it, you configure that way. Like as a, and that's the thing I'm going to discuss on system one, chapter one. What is our role? Like who will do that? You will be doing it. You will be calling yourself human wire. You heard about hardware, software, but without us, this device is only dumb black devices. They can't do anything. <laughs> we have to say, no, do NAT64 way, do dual stack way. Then, they'll... yeah, good question. This is the look of an IPv6 address. It's a multicast address. See all Fs, all Fs, like all ones. 255, 255, 255 is a broadcast address in here, all Fs, because that's the last alphanumeric character in X, right? So that's the multicast address. So this is preferred format of IPv6, but see in here, so many leading zeros, There's so many zeros in between, so you can reduce it like that. So these three zeros can be one zero, and again, same here, and then, in here, all zeros are gone. All zeros are only one single zero, and so on. And here, you have two situations where you have multiple zeros in one here, one here. So you have zero and zero, double colon. But you have double colon here, but you have keep this. As I said, only one may be used. So is it, what is your feedback doing this? Now the lectures are going like cut, 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 like that, very fast. but. Why I'm doing it? Because we already spent a lot of time to explain this without looking at it. The motivation of mine is if we can, it's like a, if you watch TV and if you listen to radio. If you watch a TV, if you see a yellow bird, you cannot visualize, is this any other color a bird can be? Blue, black, 
if you listen to radio, you can have your own dream or what can be blue, yellow, black, brown. So that's what I come from. So now I'm going with this because it's already with you and you can read this on your own time with your radio first. Now you're watching the video. <laughs> that's, that's how I'm coming from. Anycast and IPv6 Anycast address is an IPv6 Anycast address that can be assigned to multiple devices. And there is some notes for you because this is a bit new. Uh, this is a bit new in concept. Like you heard multicast broadcast a lot, but a lot less Anycast, but there is a note. So IPv6 prefix length is divided 64 bits, 64 bits. So prefix length is the first 64 bits for network portion. And these are different unicast addresses, internet routable address, global unicast. Devices on the same link, like as I mentioned, router one, router two, same link, confined to a single link, link local. And unique local is within a site, not site local. I made a uh, wrong term there. It's not site local, it's called unique local for the site addresses. So all unicast, uh, local unicast address starting with FE80. And all global Unicast address starting from 2000, double colon, slash three, okay? And in that, you have number of information. As I mentioned, there is no subreading concept, no class information in IPv6, but still there is a provision. The first 64 bits, which is the prefix length, you can have it 48 and 16. 48 bits your prefix length and 16 is for subnet ID, even case, like Cisco is a big business. They have 180 countries, staffs and businesses and branch offices. So they may need subnets even in IPv6. So they have a provision and 16 bit subnet, that means 65,000 subnetwork they can have. As of now, Cisco has only 200 countries covered. How many countries do we have in the world? Maybe 200 or 300 countries in the world. Okay. So it's still being under control. And interface ID is the last 64 bits. So router configuration, you configure, we haven't, we haven't seen even the router configuration with IPv4, so I'm just skipping this, but what they're trying to say here is the same configuration in, instead of, you go to the interface mode, instead of IP address, you just used IPv6 address, that's the difference. As we speak more on IPv4 address configuration, it will get more clearer. So that's how you configure statically on a PC, like your, Properties, network, TCP, IP configuration. Now they're talking about dynamic assignment of IPv6, stateless, and stateful. So when it is stateless address auto configuration, a device can obtain its prefix. Prefix length, prefix means the first 64 bits of information. Prefix length means that's 64, and default gateway information and all other information from an IPv6 router. These devices are hungry of an IPv6 address. So they are getting router solicitation. They send a router solicitation request message. Hey, router, give me an address. Router sends an advertisement message. Hey, take my prefix, prefix land. That's the Slack process. So this router will send every 200 seconds new IP addresses, auto configuration. So you don't need to worry about it. It's not manually set, it's automatically. Every 200 seconds, if you need to have a new address, it will give any address and it will be all fixed. <clears throat> Router advertisement has got two options, Slack and DSC version six. So if you use only Slack, then it will be Slack. If you use stateless DSCV, then for other information, for other information, you'll go to the DSCV. What other information? DNS, TFTP, and that information, as I mentioned. If you go 100% DSCV, that's called stateful. So use just the router's link local address for default gateway and use all information from DSCV version 6. So the 64 bits, the last 64 bits is made of EUI, extended unique identifier. So 24 bits is the, you know, the 48 bit MAC address. Out of 48 bits, the first 40, 24 bits is organizational unique identifier. The manufacturer, Cisco, Dealing, Netcom, Broadcom, whoever makes the Mac cards, media access control cards or network interface cards, they have a unique identifier. 
and the last 24 bits 40 so that's how this is very unique but this is so called because anyone can easily spoof a mac address with a free third party software these days it's not that difficult to do it so it's a lot of take so what i'm doing i'm just passing this information this is a five days i know it's very intense i know you are already tired i can feel from your expression and i understand that but i'm just going because Australia, we're good in compliance. We finished these lectures as well. But it is with you. I'm always contactable. You have got my Facebook page. You have my YouTube channel. Give me a poke, pass. And you know my mobile number and such. Call me. Fine. Don't call me at 2 o'clock in the morning. I watch FIFA at that time. <laughs> okay. So, link local address can be established dynamically, can be configured manually. What is the motivation of manually? Because if it is dynamic, it will have that 64 bits E U I thing long. You can make error when you're typing. So if you set locally, statically, it will be F E eight zero colon colon one easy. And finally, I'm nearly there. So that's how simple it is. See IPv6 F E eight zero link local. If it is dynamic, the address will be big 128 bit. You cannot remember it even. Like some, some national's name is so big. They have the father, mother, all everyone's name. The Latin American people, they have the father, mother's name. And I had a funny example. Like I had a student who has got the same name two times. I said, it's an error. Like maybe by mistake, first name, last name, same, same. And in I heard it in Latin America. They, it is culturally not so good that people got married in the same family. So that person's parents are from the same, their cousin cousin, brother, or sister. And as their same um, family, the surname is same, and they have to have both father and mother name. So father's surname and mother's surname, same, same. So his name is same, same. So it is a funny example, but it happens. So, and in a multinational environment, we learn every day, every day. So I'm moving on. So this is how we verify IPv6 address. Give your command, show IPv6 command. And this is some packet tracer uh, examples, multicast address. In, in the way IPv6 handles giving some host device an IP address, it consults with all routers and consults with all nodes in the same network. So if you send some all router, then this address, if you send all nodes, then this. So these are the differences. Another left and Connectivity verification, so messaging protocol, ICMP, and I mentioned this, root redirection, time exceeded, and there is an explanation here as well. And I covered the router solicitation, router advertisement, network solicitation to remove the address resolution or duplicate address. So router checks with other routers. Is it being given duplicated to someone else? And this is how you do the ping test, ping Look back address, you are fine. Then you move on to the next device. You configure properly. Trace route or trace RT. Trace route is in the router. Trace RT is in the PC. And asterisk used to indicate a lost packet. So if the outcome is asterisk, that means from there you have something lost. Because it's blocked. Because maybe in different, that good question, Trevor. In different network, maybe the network administrator, the block, the utility. So sometimes you cannot ping even something. So it's, it's, it's the, yeah. So these are some labs. And finally, maybe this is the slide you like to see at this moment of the day. So that's the summary. That means we finished this lecture.